hey internet people what's up welcome back to my channel so today is Saturday and Saturday means I get the loft all to myself if you don't know my husband uses it as his work from home space um, but it's also my sewing space so on the weekends I get it all to myself so I'm currently in the middle of a project I'm working on Vogue 9315 I'm making this version here um, and I started it last week I have kind of a blousey looking thing going already you can tell I was very inspired by the pattern cover art because I'm making a striped version um, so uh, yeah I have darts I have the side seams I have the shoulder seams already done so I'm gonna be working on that today so because we live in the times of COVID we don't go out much I don't even know what phase our city is in but we just don't really do much outside the house these days uh, so I like to try to do things at home that feel maybe a little special or fun and that usually includes food related activities TV related activities and sewing related activities so I thought tonight what if it would be kind of fun to finish this blouse so that I could wear it tonight and um, make a special dinner I think getting takeout would be more fun, but I have some frozen fish and chips in the freezer, which is kind of a naughty food. It's fried, two fried things, uh, dipped in tartar sauce, mayonnaise. So that's, you know, it's naughty, it's fun, right? <laughs> so what if I finish this top, wore it, made fish and chips, and watched TV for a great Saturday night in? I don't know, it sounds kind of lame when you say it out loud, but you know what, we are working with what we have, and making the best out of the times we live in. So I better get started because I think it's about 1.30 or 2 o'clock, who knows? It's like 1.30 or 2, so if I'm gonna finish it by dinner time, better get on it. Okay, so my first step here, well not very first step, but first step today is to make a 5 8 inch narrow hem at side opening edges, tapering to nothing above the upper large circle. Pivot across the seam allowance, 1 4 of an inch above and below upper and lower large circles when stitching. I thought this was kind of a strange instruction. I've never seen, uh, I've never seen a hem that tapers to nothing in the middle of a seam allowance. So in the middle of the side seam, you basically make a little hem and then taper it down to nothing and then obviously you have the raw edges for the rest of the seam allowance or the rest of the seam does that make sense it's kind of strange has anyone else seen anything like this we'll see what it looks like when it's done i also had to lol a little bit because if you saw my last video you know that narrow hems uh i've gotten real good at them so i know how to do a narrow, a narrow hem for this pattern too <laughs> okay this is what that step looks like when it's finished, um, you can see here, it just tapers to nothing, the narrow hem. Um, this is the side seam allowance, and so this is the slot that the tie goes through. Uh, I didn't quite catch all of the hem here when I was top stitching, so I'm probably gonna go back and redo that. I still think it's a really strange way of doing this. I don't know why. I guess I don't really know of any better way, but it seems weird to leave it like this. How else would you do it though? I mean, I guess if you were surging it, how would that look? bit later and I just finished um, bias binding the neckline it was a little bit tedious and it's a little bit puckered at the neck back of the neck but I think it's okay next up is working on the sleeve So 
we've come to the point in the pattern when we are going to make the, when we, when I, when I am going to make the ruffles for the sleeve. Um, that's this here. So basically um, you have the sleeve piece and the ruffle piece and you uh, put gathers into the ruffle piece to attach to the sleeve. So in the past, I made my gathers um, with just whatever thread I was using to sew uh, whatever garment I was making. And oh, every time it's a hassle, it's so annoying. So today I'm going to try a new technique. Well, it's not really new, it's new to me. And that is that zigzag dental floss method. So I don't, I'm sure you probably know about it. Um, you basically take a piece of dental floss and then zigzag over it in the seam allowance. And apparently that makes it really easy to make gathers. Um, instead of dental floss, I'm going to use this thread here. It's um, a vintage linen thread, and I don't think it's really good for anything because it's uh, vintage, and as we all know, um, thread degrades over time. So uh, I'm going to use it though because it's pretty thick. Uh, I think it'll stand in place of dental floss really well. So we're going to use that. I've also pulled out the one machine that I have that does zigzag. Well, that's actually not true. My vintage singer does do zigzags with a zigzag attachment, but um, I'm pulling out the one machine that I have that does zigzags easily and I don't have to do much setup for. And that is my uh, singer, not singer, Simplicity Denim Star. So let's make these ruffles. Uh, also, I just wanna show you this is linen thread from Ireland and look at how cute the sticker is. Probably, was it focused? I don't know. Love vintage stuff. Okay, here is the first sleeve and yeah that technique is way easier and I am very late to that party okay so it's about 6 30 now and I think I'm gonna stop for today uh, I have two sleeves and a bodice and I'm actually pretty close to being finished I just need to obviously attach the sleeves make the tie and do the hem. Um, so I really wanted to get it done today so I could have that magical Saturday night outfit, but uh, that's okay. I'm starting to make mistakes because I'm getting kind of tired of sewing. So I think it's better to stop and make sure that what I sew is quality instead of rushing through it to get it done. Um, it doesn't really matter anyways because we're just gonna watch TV and more than likely, uh, I'd probably take it off and put on pajamas anyways. So. Um, that's all right. I'm still gonna eat fish and chips tonight. I'm looking forward to that. We have a bottle of champagne that literally says on the bottle it goes well with fish and chips. So I'm gonna pop that open and relax. We're gonna probably watch The Good Place and we have about half of the third movie of um, The Hobbit left to finish. So I think that's the plan for tonight. Tomorrow, I'm gonna finish this top. Hello, internet people, happy Sunday. Welcome back to the loft. Uh, we're up here today to finish up this blouse that I was working on yesterday. Um, but I have to say, my sewing motivation is kind of lacking today. Yesterday, it was really bright and sunny and um, sewing this kind of springish top felt good. Um, but today, it's cold and dark and rainy and so, feels not as good. Uh, it's kind of late, it's probably about three o'clock now and I've been kind of lazy all day, kind of just not wanting to come up and sew, but uh, I put on my face and uh, I made it up here. So now that we're up here, I'm putting on an episode of Mad Men and uh, going to try to finish this blouse. But first things first, I just started pinning the sleeve um, into the bodice. So um, we're gonna attach the sleeves, make the tie and 
make the hem and then should be done. And I did not make a muslin for this, so I don't even know if it's gonna fit. But anyways, let's get started. Okay, little update for you. We're three episodes down of Mad Men. I have sleeves attached to the bodice here. And um, I have two of the ties made, well, the two ties made. Spent a lot of time pressing the two waist ties because I wanted the roll to be um, really nice. Um, you can see. Maybe you can see, I wanted like a really good like 16th of an inch roll to one side. Um, so I spent a lot of time doing that. And um, now I'm gonna work on attaching the waist ties and um, wait for the Thai food that we ordered for dinner to come. And I realized that we ate fish and chips yesterday and Thai food today, but the weekend so we're gonna go with that and I promise I'm going to eat healthier this week starting Monday mm -hmm. yep it's gonna happen hello internet people welcome to Monday I convinced my husband to work downstairs today so that I could finish my Vogue 9315 I'm really close to being finished so I don't want to wait until next weekend to work on it um, all I have to do is attach the ties and make the hem now you might be wondering Wandering Bobbin, why are you wearing um, fabric around you? Um, and that is a great question. I have three yards of Pendleton wool currently draped around me, and that is because it is my next potential project. So I want to make the Vero Beach hoodie um, by Hey June Handmade in this Pendleton wool that I got last year at the Sew Expo for a really good price. Um, I'll insert a picture of it here, but basically it's um, a Baja style hoodie and um, I'm kind of worried that this wool is a little scratchy for a hoodie um, versus like a coat or a jacket um, because I'm kind of assuming with a hoodie you wouldn't really wear much underneath it, maybe like a cami, but like a jacket you would wear like a full like shirt or top or turtleneck. Um, or sweater or whatever you would wear under a jacket but like a hoodie maybe not so much so I was kind of worried it would be sort of itchy um, obviously Pendleton wool is really good quality but I mean it's not like cashmere or anything so I thought I would put on like a tank top and then <laughs> just kind of wear the fabric around to see how it felt and if it felt too itchy for me um, to wear as like a hoodie so now this was one of my make nine projects so if I don't do it I don't know, does that ruin my Make 9? I guess not. Well, what if, okay, if I don't use this fabric with the pattern that I had chosen for Make 9, so basically this fabric with the Vero Beach hoodie, maybe it would still count as Make 9 if I made something from this fabric and I made something out of the pattern as well separately. So it ends up turning into a Make 11 or something, whatever, anyways. No one probably cares that much about that sort of <laughs> that sort of thing. Anyways, so I'm gonna wear three yards of Pendleton wool fabric draped around me, and I'm gonna try to finish um, this top. It's kind of funny to think back to Saturday when I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna finish this top. I'm gonna wear it tonight." Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's done. Here is the final Vogue 9315. Hello, and welcome to the floor of the loft. Um, I'm tired of sitting at my sewing desk, so I thought, let's take it to the floor. Okay, so I finished the blouse. You can't really tell very, doesn't look like much, but it's done. Just needs a final press, and um, I think at some point I might redo the hem. I'm like not happy with the quality of the stitching, which seems to be kind of the theme for me with my vintage singer. I don't know, I just, I don't like the way the stitches look, especially for like a hem where it shows. So anyways, I might redo that um, 
But I'm gonna give it a final press and then try it on for you. And update on the wool. I've been kind of having it on and off while I've been finishing up the top. And you know, it's pretty, um, it's not bad. It's not that scratchy, but you know, I was kind of thinking while I was sewing um, about the Friday Pattern Company Ilford, Ilford, Ilford jacket, which is kind of like a chore style jacket. And I'm kind of wondering if I wanna make that instead out of it. <sighs> decisions, decisions. I will have to think about it. Um, but like I said, it's not super itchy, but it's also not not itchy. So I don't really want to risk making something that could potentially even be itchy. Like, let's just take that off the table completely and make outerwear. So that's maybe what I'll do. This is my finished Vogue 9315. I made it out of a rayon. It's uh, dark gray and white striped. I was obviously very inspired by the pattern envelope. I cut a size 18 and I didn't make any modifications to the pattern. I think it fits pretty good for a pattern with no changes. I think it might be a little small for me. Um, it works, but maybe a size up would be a little more comfortable. I think these days I'm not really wearing a lot of fitted clothing so it does feel a little bit tight um, but it works um, it fits okay I think there could probably be some adjustments here in the arms uh, and the maybe the bust um, and it's it's a little short too uh, the back kind of keeps popping out from the keeps popping out of the waist ties so a little small but no modifications I think it's not bad straight out of the package um, let's see, so I didn't really have too many problems with this pattern. It's a very easy Vogue and it was really easy to put together. No major issues, no major problems. I think the one thing to point out would be the armholes. Um, you can see they're kind of puckered and they're not really laying flat. It seems like in the last couple projects I've done, I've had sort of a wavy puckery armhole seam here. So I think it could be a personal problem. It might be the patterns that I'm using. They're all big four and we all know big four usually can have problems with their patterns, but um, I think I might just need to go back and review armhole or review, review setting in sleeves. So I think that's like the main issue. And then obviously the fabric wrinkles instantly. I already have wrinkles in the ruffles, which is disappointing since I'm filming it, but that's okay. It's a lived in look. So overall, I really like this pattern. It's really easy. It's really cute. It's a really nice top for summer. I love the big bow, the DV, the wrap situation, and I would definitely recommend it to everybody.